Hi, you are listening to the Tita's Declassified Survival Guide with me, your host, Tita B. We talk about tips, tricks, and tools on how you can survive and hopefully thrive your personal and professional life. Please don't forget to follow and subscribe so you don't miss any new episodes. On to today's topic! Whenever I encounter challenging people, whether at work or just in everyday life, I'm reminded that being a kind human being should be the default mindset for everyone. It's just basic human decency. Sometimes it's hard to get along with certain types of people. That's normal in everyday life. And before I get carried away and start rambling about people like these at times i really want to remind myself and everyone out there that we can sometimes be difficult or challenging to deal with as well whenever we are faced with stress pain or triggered anyone can be difficult to deal with even more so when pride and ego is on the line so before we talk about today's survival guide let's step back and examine ourselves let's see if to Today, we said or did something that might have offended anyone, whether it's intentional or not. As much as possible, and it can be difficult at times, we have to try to be aware or be self-aware of the things we say or do so we don't end up being toxic quote-unquote to other people a lot of people complain about being in a toxic environment or being with toxic people that sometimes we neglect to see if our actions might be making us toxic to other people too and whenever you do offend someone intentionally or not if you make a mistake don't hesitate to say i'm sorry i don't think you'll be less of a human being if you say sorry it's okay to lower your pride and just be humble and say sorry at times the important thing is that you recognize that you offended someone and you own up to your mistake and apologize i know how it feels like to be that difficult person because i was that especially at the start of my career i didn't even have a high designation or job description or what at the start but i was the type of person that would always complain about something i'm always angry and always treat you with a snarky retort and if i'm talking to someone and they don't understand the concept of what i'm saying i used to try to make them feel bad about it like i made them feel stupid at times even though they're not even supposed to to know or not expected to know what i was talking about i was both passive and aggressive depending on what the situation calls for i just had plain bad attitude and i'm not sure if it came with being young and being arrogant but that was how i was like before i have offended i feel like a lot of people with just my attitude and eventually i felt the way people responded around me and to be honest the level of arrogance that i had before was to a point that i didn't really care what other people said about me and you shouldn't if it's not true if it's not something that's going to help you you shouldn't really but what bothered me is that these people were veering away from me especially after that chair incident which you will recall i talked about in episode two so if you haven't listened to it you can pause this episode and go to episode two so you'll know what i'm talking about i'll wait for you here done awesome so that bad attitude was also fostered by the people i was with it was nurtured i would say and it was because we all had the same attitude during that time and when i moved to another department and i had to work alone that bad attitude really affected the way that i'm supposed to do my work you see when i transferred to that other department and i was working remotely i was i wasn't with my team i needed a network to be able to support what I was going to do in terms of projects and everything there were times that I know I had the skills for a promotion but 
I was told that because of my attitude, I wasn't even going to be offered the role. And that was an eye-opener for me because I believed before that skills alone will get you far. In reality, that's not entirely true. Sure, you can be the best at what you do, but remember, skills can be taught. Attitude cannot because it comes from within. Because of that incident, I started being really conscious of my words and my tone little by little. It was challenging because I've lived my life like that, not caring, but it was something that I know I had to change and it's not just because of work because you can't just go on hurting people around you with your words and with your bad attitude. That's not right. It started with a decision to change which is, as you know, I've talked about this before, it's habit forming, it's embedding the behavior. It started with that and I made the decision to really change the way I treat people. You need a network. Whether you're working or in your personal life, you need a network to support you and a network that in turn you will support as well. That's just how life is. And this was a practice that I had embedded over the years. I bite my tongue when I am about to say something that's not helpful but just so negative, especially if it's uncalled for. If your goal is to call out just to embarrass someone, then hold your tongue. Now, if you're calling out someone because you want them to improve, yes, you can do that. But there are dignified ways to get your message across. You don't have to be nasty. You don't have to be rude. You don't have to be little people just so you can get your point across or just to show what you know or make yourself feel superior. If you enjoy that, I hope that this episode will make you reconsider that attitude. As I moved up to different roles in different departments, I encountered people that were like the previous me, thriving on what they perceive as their superiority because they know more or they feel like they know more or they've been there longer than you. Anything that they're banking on. I've been in discussions with people like this who are just plain rude and disrespectful i don't think that shouting at someone is the best way to get your message across especially in an adult environment because it just embarrasses someone if you want to call someone out you don't need to have an audience to do that it's not going to help in character building but you know that's just me i do think there are people who also thrive when they get called out and they use that lesson learned to improve themselves which is good because that's their perception. And remember when I talked about roadblocks, you can get out of the roadblock depending on how you perceive things. And if you're one of those people who are like that, that's great. But there are people who just can't live with that because it touches your emotional well-being because you're getting embarrassed. Try to make it a point to show grace and just be compassionate. It's hard and it's challenging and it's just very difficult to do there i know that i can choose to be my old self and just shut them up disregarding respect or whatnot and i've had people who belittled me and i had lots of chances to shut them down shut them up just to show that what they perceived isn't true but it's not really gonna help me it's gonna feed my ego yes but i don't think it's going to help me in my self-discovery and self-development because i know what i can do and sometimes i am so so tempted to make them feel bad and embarrassed as well and not only in my situation but in other situations where i see people who are on the receiving end of these situations but as the bible says words can bring life or death so you have to choose to make your words bring life and it's not just the words it's, it's the way you say the words because sometimes your tone conveys what your words can't so your words you choose them carefully make it so you give people hope so if i hear or i am in situations like this i choose to think that this person is going through something and i need to be the bigger person or i need to show grace and compassion and it's normal to feel angry because we're all human but remember that you can only control your reaction and not other people's reaction countering a difficult situation like that with another bomb or a shouting match is not gonna resolve the situation 
from the anecdotes I've shared, in my case, if I do let my guard down, even a tiny sliver of my old self and my tone changing, people know that I'm angry because the habit that I've been changing and I've been suppressing because it's not something that helps anyone is going to manifest itself. It takes a while for me to really go from being annoyed to angry because of years of practice. So self-control is really important. Not only to ensure that you're not a quote-unquote challenging person to deal with but for you to be able to deal with these types of situations or people as well and remember you won't look like or feel like a fool if you control your emotions which would probably what you would feel if you just let it all out uh, aka the chair incident on episode two i'll pause again and let you go to episode two i'll wait done awesome today's episode is not only a survival guide but it also serves as a reminder to me and i hope to others as well on how far you have come in being a better person if someone like me can do it i'm sure you can do it as well commit to it it's a lot of work because you're changing a habit it's not instant because you're embedding a behavior but you can do it and it starts with a decision you have to choose your battles now not all situations will require you to flight Sometimes, of course, you have to fight. And there will be times that it's gonna happen. And what's happening is really wrong. And if that's the case, of course, go ahead and call it out. Speak up, but make sure that when you do speak up, you think of your words and make sure they're still respectful. Don't have a shouting match with anyone that doesn't solve anything. It's just a battle of egos. Someone is bound to lose. Both of you will feel bad after that shouting match. And don't say offensive words. In today's culture, anything can be offensive, so be very careful. And try to state the facts. Remember where your emotion is coming from because that will dictate your tone. Don't just be defensive or defend someone because of pride. Do it because it's the right thing to do. And no matter how how tempted you are don't use your words to hit below the belt especially if what you're planning to say is not connected to what you're talking about but the best thing really to do is if possible step away from the situation and remove yourself from what's happening it will give you time to assess the situation how you will react and what steps you're gonna take you don't need to add fuel to every fire that you encounter at the same time you don't need to douse every fire that you encounter as well now just because you step away doesn't mean that you're a pushover or a doormat it just means you're smart enough to remove yourself out of the pot before it boils kindness is not being spread enough so help spread it choose to be considerate and compassionate because not a lot of people are kind people are always kind not just when it's easy or when it's going to benefit them because otherwise that's not kindness that's manipulation i hope i help you gain a different perspective and remember no one is beyond repair that difficult or challenging person that you've encountered they're all capable of change now these people People might be reacting as a result of pain, anger, or shame that they don't know how to channel. Maybe a kind order too will help them realize that they need to turn over a new leaf. Who knows? Maybe you'll start that change in them. Maybe they're used to anticipating resistance or they're just pessimistic that they're always on guard. So choose to be kind, do what's right, and hear out what the other side has to say, but not with the intention of changing their opinions. Extend compassion and understanding as much as you can, even if you feel that they don't to serve it for instance they reacted harshly towards you assume that they don't mean to be hurtful with their comments or their feedback and i've been there it really is challenging it's not easy but you don't need to step on anyone to get your point across and lastly be humble no matter what position you reach what job description what designation what success you receive always be humble being humble enables you to have an open mind and even though it's not a solution it helps in sure that you're not part of the problem or you are not the problem because it gives you a better chance of learning and listening it keeps your relationships intact and even though we have different personalities which causes quote-unquote difficult people challenging people toxic people it's best to show love and peace as much as possible and i know this isn't something that we can do a hundred percent of the time but i hope whenever you listen to this podcast it's going to remind you 
that that's the right thing to do or listen to this podcast if you need a reminder this has been your survival guide tita b i hope that today's episode helps you to deal with these type of people and also helps you prevent from becoming quote-unquote difficult toxic or challenging stay safe god bless and i will see you on the next survival guide Disclaimer, please note that all opinions expressed by me and my guests are entirely our own and does not reflect those of any organizations, groups, or companies. So do take what you hear from here with a grain of salt, as you should with anything that you listen to or watch.